right, guys, welcome back to the vlog. Pretty much continuation on to our suspension overhaul. Um, now we're working on the back knuckle. We're gonna replace all the bushings on that one too, and all the control arms, traction arm, and the toe arm. Um, first, I'm gonna start off with the tool list of what we need to do this job, and uh, let's get right into it. So for this uh, tool list, you'll need a 19, 17, 14, yeah, some sockets, which is the same size, 3 8 Allen, 316 Allen, You'll need the 32 millimeter to break loose the axle nut. Of course, all your wrenches and your ratchets, breaker bar, and a um, torque picks. You'll need a flathead screwdriver for the uh, drum brake, a pair of pliers, some rope, definitely a uh, impact gun, and uh, a mallet just to help us uh, remove the disc, just in case it gets stuck in there. But other than that, uh, pretty much, pretty simple tools that you can rent or uh, you can have around the house. Uh, maybe not the 32 millimeter and the impact gun, but you can get an electrical one if you don't have uh, access to air. But yeah, that's it, let's get started. Just wanna give you guys an overview of what I uh, replace. So on the rear knuckle, we replaced all the rubber bushings to uh, Superco solid bushings or solid bearings uh, toe arm camber arm and the traction control arm looks pretty sick you guys and hopefully it's going to improve the handling of the, of the uh, GTR you guys pretty excited all new nuts kind of wanted to change out the bolts to kind of rusted uh, aesthetically it doesn't look that's good, but yeah, pretty happy with it. I adjusted all of them, and the uh, eccentric lockout kit on here for the camber, and inside here for the toe. Pretty stoked. So for this install, we're gonna start by uh, removing the cotter pin and breaking loose the axle nut, and uh, after that, we're gonna take off all the old factory arms take off the disc brake the caliper so that we can get access to the brake cable here last thing we do, we're going to do is brake loose the shut that will help us hold the caliper on and the disc on so that it doesn't drop So just to recap, when you're taking the disc brake off, you have to uh, release the tension on the spring that hold that clamps the uh, e-brake to the uh, back of the disc brake here. And to to do that, you have to take the grommet out, spin it, and it should sit on the top here. And then you back off the spring, and I believe it's uh, going upwards, and that'll release the spring all the way. And then you're able to take off the uh, the disc brake. And what I meant by is, when you adjust, when you turn it, you'll see, you'll be able to see it through that little hole, and you just back off the spring, just like that. Or you don't lose the washer. Caliper's off and I wrapped it in some protective plastic or paint protection film or you can use a towel. Hooked it up to the uh, strut here so that it's free hanging so there was no stress on the brake line. 
So up next, we're gonna remove the camber arm here. 17 and 17. So now we're gonna take the disc off. Now that I've backed off all the uh, tension off the brake patch for the jump brake, uh, hopefully it should come out. On the other side, we had to tap it a little bit uh, with the mallet. So, we'll see. There you go, guys. So just hit it with the mallet gently, not too hard so you don't damage the disc, but there you go. So when you're doing these projects that are uh, on your own and uh, a good advice that a friend gave me was make sure you take a lot of pictures so you can reference if you're lost or you don't remember what all these components uh, go back. So good advice. Thanks, Jamie. Um, hit them up, you guys. But yeah, I'm going to take some pictures. So just in case. So he always says two hands. Grab with two hands. So you don't prick this. There you go. That's one. And the other thing I like to do is because what's left and right, I took a piece of tape and I taped it off. There you go. So now I know which side is left and which side is right. And then I always set it on the side in order of how it went out. Number two. There you go. So up next, we're gonna loosen up the bolt here so that we can release the e-brake cable. And I believe that is a 13, 14. 14. Couple of gentle taps here. So now that we got that loosened, I'm gonna remove the cable here and all it is is held on by this um, I think it's like a tensioner I don't know exactly what it's called but there's a little cylinder in here it's only held on by a little cylinder and it just falls right through right there so how it's held on it's the cylinder goes into the through the cable and it goes and clamps inside here. And that's it. That's all it's held on to. So make sure you don't lose that cylinder. It's a little right there. If you lose that, you're screwed. Now the cable can come out. There we go. There, that's it. It was on that pretty good. So I like to put the 10 or the 14 back on so we don't lose it. Let me set it aside. So after we got the uh, cable off, next we gotta take off the uh, spring tensioner um, adjuster. So we'll, let's do that. And there you go guys. And this is free floating, so make sure you don't lose that. Make sure you tape it off or do something not to lose it. I'm gonna tape mine off. So I marked mine off green is basically so that that little screw pin thing doesn't fall out and the white masking tape is indicate left hand side. All right, so now we're gonna continue on removing all the uh, toe arm, camber, and the traction control arm. Once those are out, then we can uh, get access to the ball joint but we need to get the axle out first. 19 and 17. So 
17. There you go. That's the camber arm. It's out. There you go, guys. Got the camber arm out. Uh, make sure you put the bolts and nuts back into the same spot so that you don't mix them up. Just easier that way. All right, guys. So up next is the uh, traction control arm. And uh, it's held on by a 17. There's a bolt here, a 17 nut, and a 17 bolt. There we go. Seventeen. This has a little spacer on, or a washer on it too. There you go. Seventeen bolt and nut. All right, up next is the tow arm and 17 nut and bolt, 17 nut and a 19 bolt. Uh, you may want to use an extension or a deep socket on the 17 side because the uh, exhaust might be in the way. Keep in mind this is a aftermarket exhaust. I don't know how the factory one is. Um, I also remove the sway bar too. Um, that was another thing I did before I installed this and it's held on by 14s and I believe they are 17s that are held on or bolted onto the, uh, the knuckle. Uh, don't quote me on it because uh, I didn't, I don't know what the factory one is, but the factory nuts they're on the, the rear chassis here. Here's a 14. 17. Nineteen. There you go guys, it's out. Couple more steps to go. We gotta loosen the uh, lower strut bolt here. And I believe that's a 17. 17. So we're gonna take that out so we can pivot the knuckle forward to take the axle out. And then we're almost there. Now it's a good time to start chaining off or roping off the knuckle. So I'm going to just brace it right there for now. So what I did was connect it to the hole where the um, sway bar goes and link goes into and onto the spring. There you go. You see how it just dropped? 17. So now I should be able to remove the axle. Now we're going to remove the uh, cotter pin so that we can release the bolt holding the ball joint on. I just moved the axle a bit so that we can get access to that bolt. There you go guys. Use a flathead and got it out. A little rusted but it's out. So now is the time you may want to uh, rope off the axle because uh, once we remove that it's going to drop. So this is where you need an impact gun because that ball joint will just free spin. There we go. There you go guys, 19. Now, it should just come right out. There we go guys. There you go. Out. So, tying it off, 
basically it doesn't let the CB boot here lay freely, just dangling there. If the CB boot or the axle comes too far forward, it's going to fall out and we're going to have a big problem. Uh, either replace or sometimes it's hard to uh, repair that. So it's not good guys. So make sure you rope it off. All right. And protect your precious metal here. You don't want that uh, all damaged. And uh, I made that mistake on the other side. Kind of hurt, but we'll get through it. There you go, guys. All right. That was pretty, uh, not too bad. Took on the task. Yeah, that goes off. And we're going to go out and uh, get it, uh, all the uh, SPL spherical bearings uh, pressed in and put all the uh, SPL control arm, traction arm, and toe arm. All right, guys. So uh, we got the knuckle back and all the SPL bushings are pressed in and now we're ready to reinstall it. So we're going to start by putting it back onto the axle and the ball joint. All right, so I got the ball joint bolt in. What it is, I lifted it up, pushed the axle back in a little bit, angle it, got the 19, and then impacted it in. A little bit of uh, adjustments just to get the impact in, uh, but once you got it in, it's pretty straightforward. Make, use you, make sure you use a, uh, a chain just to take some of the weight off while you're doing that, if you're by yourself. Easier if you have two guys. Now that we got it in, we're gonna put the new cotter pin in. All right, cotter pin's in for the uh, ball joint. We're just gonna put the axle nut back on for now. And then we're gonna put the lower strut bolt back on just to take some of the tension off again. We had to take it off just to uh, maneuver the axle out of the way to get the ball joint in. So now we're ready. We're gonna throw the uh, camber arm on. And the camber arm comes well, we're gonna replace it with the SPL eccentric lock up kit. There we go. We're just gonna hand tighten everything and then we'll throw them down to spec after. All right, next we're gonna throw the uh, traction control arm. Keep in mind you guys, when you install the adjustable SPL uh, any kind of arms or anything like that. Make sure the Allen key nuts are accessible when, uh, when you go for alignment. Um, make sure they don't go down like that because if it's on the, touching the subframe, you can't get access to it. Keep that in mind. They come with two spacers. Don't forget those. Up next is the toe arm. Um, by the way, all these, I already had them pre-adjusted already. Um, check in my last video. I'll put the uh, link up here, uh, how to adjust these. So I got all the control arms all back in. All the bolts are all hand tightened. Um, the knuckle is back in, axle bolt is in. Now we're gonna start assembling back the drums. Um, remember, I marked them off this is on the left side, so we're gonna start putting all back together. This is the, the adjuster uh, to put the tension on the spring. Going up is uh, loosening it, and going down is tightening. As you can see, the thread come out. All right, so we're gonna start putting that back together. Just one. And put the top spring back on. That's why we mark these off. So we're gonna hook that in. Down here. There we go. And then see how the sprockets, as you turn it or you pull the e brake, it tightens the, uh, the spring. Okay, up next is the bottom one. So we're going to put this back in, and these are directional. Remember that cylinder that goes in between the cable and the mechanism here. Just drops in and clamping force here. Just 
holds the cylinder in place. There you go, guys. So we're gonna put the last spring on. And there you go, guys. So the drum brake's all back in, and now we're gonna put the disc back on. So all, all the spring and the locking mechanism's all back on. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put the disc back on. grommet back on. So now that the disc is back on, we're going to throw the uh, brake caliper back on. So I'm going to go over all the uh, torque specs for you guys. So the two brake caliper 38 Allen are uh, 58 foot pounds. The lower strut bolt here is 55 foot pounds. So the rear toe arm is 53 on the knuckle and 53 on the subframe. And for the, the camber arm, it is 53 on the subframe and 65 on the knuckle. The torque specs for the traction control arm here is uh, 53 on the subframe and 65 on the knuckle. All right guys, so that pretty much covers all the torque specs. Last but not least, the axle nut. And that's 165 foot pounds. Uh, of torque and to finish it all off brand new cotter pin inside and that's it guys all right guys thanks again for uh tuning into this week's hopefully that was uh, pretty educational for you guys um pretty big task i took on quite honestly probably wouldn't be able to finish it or complete it if it wasn't for some great friends of mine jamie and uh, aramis big ups to you guys also want to thanks to our good friends over at envision um, great bunch of guys. If you're looking for car parts or just not for just specifically your GTRs, but any kind of vehicle, hit up Gerald. I'll put the link in below. And uh, if you're looking for wheels, Peter Liu is the guy, real wheel deal. Again, I'll put the link in the description below. Hit them up, you guys, if you guys want to uh, get any sick car parts or uh, rims and tires. All right, so uh, next week, uh, we're gonna head out for wheel alignment and hopefully we can get it back on the road. And uh, for you GTR owners, hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, pretty much everything here basically sums it all up and help you guys get access to the uh, drum brakes, the brakes, uh, axles, um, pretty much easy stuff uh, once you know it. Uh, don't be uh, afraid to do stuff on your own, you guys. All right, so uh, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, share the content, and um, we'll see you guys in the next vlog.